Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Furikake Healthy Savory Sprinkles. My name is Tomoko Sekiguchi and I'm a program coordinator at the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. We are happy to join the table for two USA and co-present today's webinar to support their Onigiri Action Campaign. We have been very proud to support the campaign since it launched nine years ago by presenting events that related to onigiri or rice bowl. I'm sure that many of you have attended the event in the past and I thank you for that. This year, we focus on furikake, a Japanese condiment that is delicious on cooked rice and one of the popular ingredients for onigiri. Before we begin, Please let me briefly introduce tonight's speakers. Mayumi Uejima Carr, the president of Table for Two USA. She will talk about their annual Oniki action and how you can participate in this year's campaign after this introduction. Then Dr. Masaki Morishima, an associate professor in the Department of Food Science and Nutrition at Kinda University, Osaka, Japan, will discuss the development of their university's product that was targeted to meet the sustainable development goals and promote healthy eating. Please feel free to submit your questions by typing in the Q&A box during Mr. I'm, Dr. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, during Dr. Morishima's presentation. We will have a Q&A right after her presentation. A Japanese English interpreter, Saki McCarthy, will assist Dr. Morishima during the Q&A. Following the Q&A, Deborah Samuels, cookbook author and cooking teacher from Table for Two USA, will demonstrate how you can make delicious homemade furikake using ingredients that are available in the US. This webinar is being recorded. The recording of this program will be posted on our YouTube channel at the later day. Now, please enjoy the program. Mayumi san, onegaishimasu. Thank you, Tomoko san, and hi, everybody. I'm Mayumi from Table 42, and today I'm joining from San Diego, California. So before the lecture, I would like to introduce our Onigiri Action Campaign. Let me share my screen. Okay. So first, Table for Two is a nonprofit organization started in Japan in 2007 and came to the US later. And we are trying to tackle global food imbalance. So in this world, about 1 billion people don't have enough food. On the other hand, there's about 2 billion people have health issues caused by unhealthy eating. So we're trying to solve these issues by providing healthy school meals to children in need. We also promote healthy eating through our food education program. So we have a couple of programs and campaigns and Onigiri Action is to provide food educa um, school meals. And we have a food education program it's called Wa Shoku Iku. This combines two Japanese words. First one is Washoku, Japanese food, and Shoku Iku means food education. So kids to adults how, uh, learn how to eat healthy through Japanese food angle. So they make bento to healthy ramen to okonomiyaki and enjoy eating. And we have a spring campaign called Edamame Chan. We promote healthy eating, focusing on edamame and soy, and includes fun chops take challenge using edamame in a minute, how many edamame you can pick and move. So hope you can join this campaign as well. So about onigiri action, first I would like to show a video to explain how this works. Onigiri action, onigiri action, take a picture, post it online, hashtag onigiri action. Onigiri action. Five school meals per photo. Onigiri action. Onigiri action. Fill it with tuna, fill it with pork. Just don't eat it with a big old fork. Onigiri action. Onigiri action. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, that's how it works. Then hope you understand how it works. So these are my kids who love onigiri. And onigiri action is a fall campaign. And this year we are holding from October 4th to November 17th. So we're trying to change the world with onigiri, Japanese rice balls. So how it works is you make onigiri and take a photo of onigiri or onigiri shape is okay. And um, you post the photo on your own social media with hashtag onigiri action, or you can post your onigiri photo on our campaign website. And then each photo can bring five school meals to children in need around the world. So it's free for you to participate and you can post hundred photos. And, but we have a generous partner organization who donate based on the number of photos. So we have those generous partners in the US and Japan. And we've been doing this campaign since 2015 and partnering with Japan Foundation LA as well, and has provided 8.3 million school meals. And thank you so much for, for those who joined this campaign and hopefully hope to jo uh, bring many more school meals this year. And I feel like you already know, but onigiri is a Japanese rice ball made from rice, seaweed, and any type of fillings. And it's simple, easy to make, and you can eat for breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. And another fun part, um, typical shape is triangle shape, but it can be very creative and cute. And it's like a sandwich you can put in anything inside or on top of it. And we chose this onigiri for this campaign because it's a symbol of love and care. And it's a rare food that make with your hand. And many Japanese people have memories around onigiri. So we want many people to think about children who need help and then join this action. So onigiri became globally well known through anime like popular anime, like Pokemon, like One Piece, like the character is eating like triangle shaped onigiri and people wonder what is that food? So that's how onigiri was introduced outside of Japan. And this is the onigiri photo map. If you go to the campaign website, uh, you can post your photo. And then when you post, you can input your address, could be just California or a more specific address and the photo will be placed on the map. And last year we had uh, photos from 37 countries and uh, from many uh, states as well. And on social media, uh, if you search hashtag onigiri action, you can find all the photos posted and it's just fun to see so many cute ones and some of them looks really delicious. And when you post on your social media, please uh, make the post available for public so that we can count the photos. And during this Onigiri Action campaign, there are so many events held um, from elementary schools to colleges, and they organize Onigiri Action events and learn how to make Onigiri and take photos and make a difference together. So as you can see, Everybody looks so happy and they love onigiri. Uh, so tuna and mayonnaise using like Japanese kipi mayonnaise is popular feeling. Also furikake, today's topping is the key ingredient. So this purple one is called yukari. This is uh, donated by our partner Mishima. That's um, Japanese basil and have some sour plum taste and it's very popular. And also they enjoy making cute onigiri by using seaweed and uh, vegetables. And sometimes they became onigiri by themselves. So they enjoy this uh, joining this uh, onigiri action campaign. So this year, we are hoping to have onigiri photo posts from all 50 states in the US. So it's been a month since it started and we already have photos from 39 states. And we're looking for photos from 11 more states. So if you know, these are the states we're looking for, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas. So if you know anybody from these states and please share this Onigiri Action campaign. And we, we're hoping to fill this 50 states map. And where the school meals go is that um, 
We support children in East Africa, also Southeast Asia, and here in the US as well. So one photo can bring five school meals to children in need. So here in the US, we support to have um, healthier school meals. So I hope you can um, make delicious onigiri. And today you learn more about frikake and make delicious onigiri and join this onigiri action. Okay, so that's um, about onigiri action. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Morishima and she's gonna talk uh, about her frikake story. Thank you for introducing me, Mayumi san. Uh, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Masaki Morishima from Kindai University in Japan. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm very happy to see you today. I'd like to talk about our recent research and our new production. I will be speaking for about 40 minutes. I've divided my talk into three parts. First, I'd like to talk about the problem of world hungry and food loss. And then we'll focus on what we can do to reduce food loss. Finally, I'd like to show you the strategies to improve food loss and create new production using non-standard food. Uh, can I share uh, the my slide? Uh, oh. Okay. Let me introduce myself. I was born in Tokyo and raised up in Tokushima, which is a small town at the east of Shikoku Island. My hobby is to swim, bicycle, ride a bicycle, and watch a sports game. My favorite food is melon bread. Uh, this picture. Uh, my melon bread is Japan's own bread. So, I had made it when I have been studying abroad in US for a year. I have two kids and my son loves the movie cards, so I also love it. I am I'm associate professor at the Department of Food Sci Science and Nutrition in Kindai University. My specialty in the field of public nutrition, or koshu in Japanese. In this picture, my robot students expressed our robot's name, K-O-S-H-U. I think this is a nice picture for me. Now let's start the presentation. The impact of the COVID-19 has led to a severe situation of hunger in the world. The number of hungry people in the world had been declining in recent years, but in 2021, it will be 828 million. This value is 46 million more than in 2020 and 150 million more than in 2019. In 2021, also the food security would begin to improve as the world recovered from the COVID-19 pandemic. Global hunger will be continue to increase, reflecting our regional differences. It is projected that 670 million people will still be hunger in 2030. The world is food imbalanced now because a contradiction has arisen. There are a lot of hungry people in the world, but the food loss and waste are very high. So food loss and waste is an urgent problem to solve. Food waste remains a major problem globally 
with estimated suggesting that one third of all food product is lost and wasted. Moreover, it costs the global econo economy USD 936 billion annually. Food loss and waste are generated in all stage from beginning to end of food life cycle. Food loss and waste in the food supply chains are closely related to consumers' behavior, such as freshness, orientation, and their understanding toward defective goods. In 2023, who are the biggest food waste countries in the world? What are the key facts about global food waste in 2023? Addressing this problem requires multi-faced approach. One promising avenue is using artificial intelligence technologies. Recent research suggests that the successful implementation of a circular economy for food waste will depend on continued commitment and collaboration from all actors involved in the food system, as well as ongoing innovation and adaptation in response to changing and changing circumstances and emerging challenges. As shown in slide, it provides an illustrative description of the scope of global food waste, showcasing annual household food waste figures from selected countries. Approximately 569 million tons of this waste falls under the categories of household waste. However, it is not solely households that contribute to this issue. The report reveals that food service establishments are responsible for wasting approximately 244 million tons annually, while the retail sector discards around 118 million tons. There is huge amount of food loss and waste around the world every day. In Japan, 6.12 6 million tons of food loss and waste were generated in 2017. The amount of food loss in Japan is 5.22 million tons. And in response to this current situation, the law for promotion of food loss reduction was en enacted. Surprisingly, this is 1.2 times the food aid the world currently provided to hungry people. In our study, we focused on household food loss. It has been reported that the amount of food loss at the consumption stage decreases with consumer awareness and consciousness. Among the household food losses, over removal is the discarding of edible portions, such as overpeeling vegetable. Many government policies prevent direct disposable disposal and leftover and food loss due to over removal has not received much attention. What we can do to reduce food loss? According to the survey by the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishery, enoki mushrooms are the most commonly produced in Japan and according to the nutrient intake by food group, the average intake of mushroom is increasing, suggesting that there is a high incidence of enoki mushroom waste. In addition, 
According to the National Nutrition and Health Survey, the intake of dietary fiber and vitamin D, both of which are abundant in mushroom, is insufficient in people aged 20 to 29 years. Therefore, we saw that we saw that by researching and proposing effective use for the waste part of enoki mushroom, we could raise awareness of food loss, change behavior, reduce food loss, and improve health through the functional nutrient containing in enoki mushroom. A survey of awareness of food loss for at home was conducted among 170 college students aged 18 to 22, and differences in awareness of food loss, food loss by gender, housing type, and other factors were analyzed. While most respondents believe that Food waste is a major problem that needs to be improved. The most common type of food throw away at home are excessive removal, direct disposal, and leftover. In that order, suggesting that most respondents throw away some type of food. Regarding the causes of excessive removal at home, those who have the opportunity to cook of often cited hygiene and lack of skill, while those who rarely have the opportunity to cook cited poor storage, poor storage, which accounted for half of the responses. These results suggest that frequency with which target population cook is the most influential factor in whether or not they are aware of and act on food loss rather than gender or typing of housing. Next. With the aim of raising awareness of food loss and promoting behavior changes for improving food loss, we created and provided media that included a collection of recipe using waste part of enoki mushroom. By providing the media, it is expected to raise awareness of the current situation of food loss and the need to reduce food loss. The fact that waste food parts can be eaten and the health promoting effect of eating them and methods of reducing food loss that can be done at home. We decided to create a meal using the discarded part of enoki. Enoki stems are cut off this part, cut off and discarded when eating. But these parts can also be eaten. Discarded part of enoki are used in this meal. Clean the enoki mushroom stem and saute in butter in a pan. Flavor with soy sauce, add the grain or salt of salt and pepper. Here we show it's simple, low calorie, and good for the environment. Enoki would be healthy for us because it also contains a lot of fiber. Next is a traditional Japanese rice dish making by rice cooker. If you don't have a rice cooker, you can do it in a pot. Rice with discarded part of enoki mushrooms and peeled carrot and radish peels, seasoned with soy sauce, sake, and mirin. Because this meal 
is low fat and high fiber. It is good for our health. This is miso soup with meatball containing enoki mushroom. I'd like to introduce how to make it. Add minced beef or pork, ginger, and other ingredients to a bowl and mix well with your hands. Bring a pot of water to boil. Then add the minced meatball previously prepared. After that, Add sliced carrots and spinach. Season to taste with miso. Because of one of action of dietary fibers is retaining water. High fiber foods and meat go well together. This makes meat tender and juicy when mixed with ground beef. Add the chopped onion enoki mushroom stems and other seasoning to the minced meat and mix well by hand. Roll the minced meat in a hot pan and cook. You can also bake it in the oven instead of the pan. When clear juice comes out, it is done. The mixture of minced meat and enoki mushrooms makes the meat juicy. So from above result, it can be concluded that differences in cooking frequency were found to influence on interest in food loss, and the people who is always cooking has knowledge of it compared with the people who don't cook at all. Furthermore, people who cook all the time are more likely to be influenced by recipe using discarded food. And then they are more likely to change their behavior for food loss. According to a national survey, approximately 80% of the res respondents have purchased Non-standard agricultural and marine product has reported. Furthermore, the report is suggesting that there is a poss poss possibility that more people would purchase them when consumers easily reach them. In this way, the sales of vegetable and seafood that are not currently commodities in Japan will be promoted at low prices and made readily available to consumers. The Fisheries Lab uh, Laboratory at Kindai University breeds red snapper, which is selling to seed dealers. All of both leftover and non-standard red snappers uh, 210,000 surplus per year. Although those red snappers were used as food for bigger fish and as fertilizer for the field, there is no other way but to throw it away. So we have to think of some way to use it. Since COVID-19 has spread, we are spending more time at home for meal. Elderly people and kids who live alone may find it difficult to prepare meals on their own. So the prevention of unbalanced nutrition and development of furikake that can be easily eaten is good for both health and the environment. Furikake is the most popular rice seasoning in Japan and is made from dried fish, sesame seed, and seaweeds such as nori. The reason for focusing on furikake as a new product are as follows. Furikake is inexpensive. 
Frikake is a dried product and can be stored for a long time. So, Furikake makes it conven convenient to carry and easy to use in times of emergency. The use of Furikake results in an increase in Japanese rice consumption. This is a common site in the supermarket in, of Japan. Many varieties of furikake are sold in Japanese supermarkets, and they all cost between 100 and 200 yen. If the nutritional functionality of furikake can be improved by using non-standard products that are discarded because they don't meet market standards, and adding these ingredients to furikake, it will be effective in meeting for SDG's goals number three, health and well-being for all, and number 12, responsibility to create and use. First, we looked for a way to process non-standard red snapper into a form that could be used as an ingredient in furikake. As a result, we found a processing method that could improve the nutritional value of the four snappers. Because non-standard red snapper are small, 30% of their edible parts, excluding bones and skin and so on, have to be discarded. This is not environmentally friendly, so we found a way to process the fish without throwing anything away. The processing method shown on the slide was established. In addition, since the core temperature did not exceed 90 degrees, during heat drying. So roasting was performed in an oven at 180 degrees for five minutes. This is a result of the microbiological test on the red snapper powder. This shows that it is safe to use as a food. Here are the result of the nutrient analysis of the red snapper powder. The analysis items are shown on the slide and the graph shows calcium, iron, EPA, and DHA value, which are of particular interest this time. Compared to common commercial red snapper, the, this red snapper powder showed higher value in calcium, iron, AEPA, and DHA. In summary, we found that the nutritional functionality of powdered red snapper was higher than that of common commercial one, and that the nutri nutritional functionality of powdered red snapper was higher when it was ground without removing the internal organs. In addition, a search for other unused resources at Kindai University revealed that the large amount of Mikan orange peel was in waste. Wakayama Prefecture, where Kindai Farm is located, is Japan's largest producer of mandarin orange and the climate is ideal for growing them. The farmer's mandarin orange are sold to the general public and processed into orange juice for sale. So this, so the result is a large amount of mandarin peel that is wasted. wasted. However, Orange peel is rich in hesperidine, 
are nutrients that improves food flow, blood flow, and has antioxidant properties. So effective use of orange peel is likely to improve health. This is about the processing method of orange peel. Orange peels are dried at 60 degrees for five years, five hours. They are then crushed into powder. Here are the result of pesticide residue testing of orange peel. The test results show that all items met the standard value. And the following are the result of my microbial microbiological tests on orange peel powder. The test results show that an orange peel is safe to use as a food. So we created a pre test sample and conducted a preference survey among a wide range of age groups using Kindai Furikake to gather information for commercialization. Method of survey Kindai Furikake was given at the following four fa facilities and promotional material tailored to each target people and a QR code for the survey were distributed. Invited people to learn about furikake and participate in the survey. The survey result was then collected and analyzed. At the kindergarten, attached to Kinda University, two classes of 110 kids were given a picture story show to introduce Kindai Furikake, while the other classes were given no picture story show, only Furikake. Next, they were asked a simple question and answered yes or no. By providing information about Kindai Furikake, it is believed that by providing information about the furikake in advance, the level of satisfaction of the eater was increased. Next is the hospital. Uh, the following are the result of a survey conducted at Kindai University Hospital. 380 meals were served and patients were asked to respond in the form of free text answers. The amount of furikake serves are was small, and the results were divided into positive comment and negative evaluation. However, the nutritional aspects and the texture of the food were generally well received. Next are the result of a survey of faculty, staff, and other people in the Faculty of Agriculture. On the basis of a total number of responses from 88 persons, all the respondents had a delicious opinion of the taste of furikake. The last one is a student cafeteria. Here are the result of the survey in the student cafeteria. 90 people participated. All of the respondents rated, rated it tasty and 88% said they would buy, would buy it if it were marketed. Based on these results, Cafeteria survey shows a high level of satisfaction with both taste and packaging, and the willingness to purchase was higher than that found in surveys conducted in all related areas.
Finally, AI text mining analysis was performed on the free comments from all of the surveys, and the results are shown in the world, world cloud. The result may be difficult to understand because the words are in Japanese, but here is a brief explanation of the result. Okay. It's larger letters mean that more comments are listed in the comment box. The word delicious in Japanese oishi and orange is mikan is here and the taste appeared frequency. These results shall suggest that Impression of orange is stronger than that of red snappers. Many of the respondents also express, expressed the impression that the mandarin orange were easy to eat and tasty, which indicated that there are a lot of opinion about the taste and aroma with regard to the mandarin orange. The survey results show that 93.5% and 81% of the respondents say delicious and would like to buy, respectively. Many respondents selected taste and flavor as a good point of Kindai Furikake, indicated that respondents were highly satisfied with this. Since the test sample of furikake was preferred by people of all ages, the combination of red snapper and mandarin orange will not be changed. The package of furikake will emphasize the mandarin orange. And this slide shows the nutritional composition of kindai furikake Ingredients are circled in red, as shown on the slide. According to the Japanese food labeling standard, ingredient must be listed in the order of highest content. Therefore, red snapper is the second most common ingredient in furikake. In addition, the standard value that can be listed on the label as being high in calcium is 204 milligram per 100 gram because it contains 576 milligram of calcium in Kindai Furikake. It is labeled as high in calcium. We made these furikake. Uh, we are getting ready to sell them next month. We are also planning to sell them on the internet. So we will let, let you know as soon as we have more information. As, as part of our food waste reduction efforts, our lab distributes recipe using wasted part of vegetable. If you are interested in it, please visit our website. Thank you, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Mor uh, Morishi Ma Sensei. Thank you so much. And we have Thank several you. questions. Eto, dewa, shitsugi oto no ho ni ikitai to moimasu. Eto, question and answer. So, hey, uh, the first question. Uh, Thank you for your presentation. Can we get a copy of the recipe? Ano, recipe no ko ga toko ka de mitsuke rare masu ka to yukoto nan desu ga. あ、レシピはえっと、インスタグラムの方に公開するようにします。今はしていないんですけれども、はい。あの、こちらのインスタグラムに公開するようにします。
、英語で大丈夫ですか英語ではい。はい。So,、um, they haven't yet, but they will、um, publicize it on the, their Instagram soon、uh, in English. So, please look forward to that. And the next question in the Enoki waste recipe, how do you clean the dirt out and is a block chopped up to mix with the meat? Are the full recipe available anywhere?、Oh, so the recipe will be on the Instagram.、Um, えっと、えのきの,さあの,この先っぽの方なんですけれども、どはうやいっ、はていその土とかのです、ね、あの汚れを洗えばいいんでしょうかはい。えっと、手で。あのほぐしながらあの髪を櫛でコームで溶かすような形で、えっと、指ですくってもらうときれいに外れます。で、えっと、一番端っこのところは食べられないので切りますけれども、えっと、ちょっとスライドも動かしますね。すいません。So,、えっと、uh, she's saying that if you kind of like, you know, loosen it up with your hand while,、um, uh, I think she's going to show it to you. Okay. So, the bottom part, you have to cut it. So, she's showing where to cut it. えっと、どこを切るのかっていうのが、こう、なんか赤線になってましたよね、前。Yes. So,、はい、the further to the right, you gotta cut it off, and that part, you don't eat it. And then、uh, a part in between those two red lines,、uh, you would put that in. The... えっとですね、もう一つの質問が、あのそのこうブロックみたいな塊になってるんですけれども、はい、それをまたあのちょっぴっ切ってみじん切りにしてでお肉の中に混ぜるんですか。そうです。あのハンバーグとあの肉団子のスープ、ミートボールスープはえっとこの部分をみじん切りにして。あのひき肉に混ぜています。So those meatballs and the hamburg steaks,、uh, she would, you would chop them, chop that little block and、uh, mix it into the meat.、Uh, yes, that, that was the second question. The third question, Furikake sold in US markets are so high in salt and often contain MSG. Is this a concern being addressed among Japanese manufacturers? えー、ふりかけって結構塩分が高くって、あと MSG が入っているということなんですけれども、それってあの日本では何かこう対策とかないでしょうかという話で。はい、ああ、MSG に関しては、あのー、ちょっと他のふりかけはわからないですが、あのー、今回私が作ったこのふりかけに関しては入っておりません。あえっと、えっと、今え、今売られて、アメリカで売られてるふりかけのことですね、これ今。アメリカで売られてるふりかけは。はい。は一般にあの市販されてるふりかけなんですけども。あのあ、そうですか。ええ、ええ。あ,あ,あ,あ,あ,そ,うあそうなんですね。日本でも、日本でも同じなんじゃないかと思うんですが。あ、同じですね。はい、同じです、同じです。MSG 入ってますね。えっと、MSG は入って、てるんですね。はい、すいません。ちゃんときちんと見てなかったんですけれども、今市販のものは入っているものもあるかもしれません。えー、ただ、今回のこのふりかけに関しては、マダイの粉末が非常に多く入っていまして、あの、風味がとても良いので、あの、入っていない、あの、味付けには入っていないです。MSG の中で、あの、塩分の方はどんな感じですか塩分の方は、こちらの、えー、栄養表示のところに書かれている文がそうなんですけれども、食塩は 21g 中 2.3g になります。So, the,、uh, to answer the question,、uh, Kathy, so she doesn't really know exactly what the Japanese manufacturers do.、Um, she didn't really research on that. Like, but in terms of the furikake that she's making in the recipe, Uh, the salt content,、uh, content should be less than what you can buy in the,、um, ja、in the supermarkets. And also, it does not contain any MSG. And the, the aroma of the Madai sea brim is like so amazing. So, she doesn't want to、um, destroy that part. Like, she wants to not to you know, put any extra stuff into that.、Um, yeah, it's not really a. Good answer to your question, but 
あそうですね。多分あの、日本の、あの、市販、あとアメリカで市販されているものに関しては、先生、ちょっと、はい、ご存知ないということで。で、えっ、ー、と、その他、その他一つ何かね、あのチャットの方に書いてた。いや、では、another question in the chat. How do we wash the stem of the anarchy? あ、これ同じですね。うんと、yes,、yeah, so we already answered the part. And so she was saying that you gotta kind of like loosen it up, like in the water to wash it.、Um, えっと、他にはないですかね。Any other questions? Did we answer everything? Like, if you can put any more questions on the QA,、um, I think we're good. So, I'm not sure if you're good. Okay, great. So, we're moving on to、um, Furikake cooking demonstration. Thank you so much,、uh, Morishima Sensei. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so this、uh, Furikake cooking demonstration will be by、um, Deborah Samuel's son. She is a best selling author and food writer from Table for Two USA. Okay. okay. Hi, everybody.、Um, Deb Samuel's here. I'm usually、uh, sending, calling in from Boston, Massachusetts, but Um, I happen to be in Tokyo, Japan、uh, right now.、Um, first time in four years since the pandemic. And I've been really enjoying this wonderful talk by Morishima Sensei about Furikake and about food waste.、Um, in the program that Mayumi san described,、uh, the Washokuiku program, we don't only teach about food, but we teach about、um, Japanese food culture as well. And this big concept of motai nai, not to be wasteful.、Um, and I was pretty excited to be asked to come up with some kind of a recipe for、uh, furikake、uh, using things that maybe we would throw away. And、um, a lot of what she talked about, I'm actually going to be using、uh, today. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen、um, and show you how I've made. This、uh, and how you can、uh, do it as well. And to the person's、uh, point about、um, you get to use as much salt or sugar as you want to use. And so I have、um, decreased it、uh, quite dramatically um, by um, using less salt and more of these other wonderful seasonings. So what I have here is I started with. Um, and furikake, as we know, are rice sprinkles,、um, and the Japanese use them on top of and inside rice balls.、Um, but they are, or just plain rice, but we all、uh, know that although we eat rice, we're not a big rice eating culture. So, whatever I'm showing you today can also be sprinkled on top of a baked potato, mashed potatoes, chicken, salad,、um, anything to sort of pump up the flavor a little bit. So, what I did was I took these、um, items, and speaking of clementine skins, we call them clementines or mandarin oranges、um, in the States.、Um, I have some of those. I have a carrot skin as well, because as we know, the skin is the part where there is a lot of nutrients、uh, still in the vegetable. And when we throw it away, we throw away nutrients.、Um, I have here some potato skins. And if anybody's been to a restaurant, you know that fried potato skins are a,、uh, a great treat sometimes, but we're not going to be topping them with cheese and sour cream here. And another thing that we have in the States quite a bit、um, are herbs that we use parsley and dill. And they look a little tired here, but that's okay because we're trying to use things that are motai nai, a couple of little、um, stems that. Ended up in my refrigerator, I didn't use, but I thought they would be great、um, for the kake. And then、um, leaves of、um, root vegetables are also wonderful. This is the leaf of a、um, Japanese、um, turnip, or you could use daikon leaves or whatever. And all of these I ended up mincing in、um, very, very small, and I'm just going to briefly show you how I did it. And then I sauteed it in some seasonings and it ended up like this. And this is my furikake. Now, this is not 
dried furikake. So you couldn't leave this out. Um, there is sesame oil in here. And so this would be stored in the refrigerator in a little bottle if you wanted to. Um, I don't have any of the traditional things in here, no sesame seeds, no, um, no seaweed or anything, because I wanted to just use what we could have at home. So here we are. I'm not going to spend a lot of time chopping these up, but I am going to just show you a couple of uh, things regarding um, a method. So here with the Mekon skin, um, Mekon in Japanese, Clementine, um, and orange, you see we have a thick white pith in here, and that's very, very bitter. Um, and if anybody's had candied orange peels, um, we know that the skin of oranges and Mekons can be eaten, but usually the pith is either boiled or removed in some way. So I'm just gonna show you what I did with my, um, bring this down a little bit here. Okay, and I just took a spoon and I scraped off the pith just to get rid of some of that bitterness. And um, I left everything out that you see on my plate here overnight uh, to try and reduce some of the uh, liquid, some of the moisture in these vegetables so that they would kind of fry up a little bit better and um, they would become, they would absorb the, the seasonings that I'm going to be putting in. So it's very easy to do this, remove this. And the other thing, when we do our classes with, um, with our programs with kids, um, we have a book called Motai Nayo Bachan, you know, uh, Don't Be Wasteful Grandma. And she talks about taking Mekon skins, um, Clementine skins and drying them and throwing them into your bath. So you have a beautiful, you know, a nice uh, scented bath, or you dry them and put them in a cup of tea. So we try to use um, these things in a variety of ways. So now um, the very important thing um, is trying to get all of these things cut up into um, small enough pieces so that we could use them just on the top of rice or mixing them in the rice. And I've cut all of these up, but I'll just show you um, quickly, let me just get my camera in the right position for you. Okay, so key to a lot of this uh, cutting is a really good knife. Um, and I just sort of stack things and try to cut as finely as I can. And then over chopping, chopping very finely. And I do cut everything individually, but my guess is you could cut it all together. Um, I was tempted to use a food processor, um, which I think also would be able, you know, would allow you to um, chop through very quickly, but I was afraid I would turn it into a paste. So I just am doing it by hand. And, um, taking just the few things that you have around, any mix whatsoever, and just trying to get them all to be about the same size and adding them to here. Since I only have a brief amount of time, I'm not gonna chop everything up for you. I'm going to start uh, cooking it. And so I have my pot right here, my little pan. And this is actually a tamagoyaki pan but um, it was great for making this. And then we can talk a little bit about the seasonings. So on a medium flame, okay, I have, I'm gonna get that up, and I have some sesame oil. And this, as we all know, is very, very flavorful and will make anything you fry in it taste good. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of sesame oil and I'm going to pour it into the bottom of the pan like this. And if anybody has any questions at all, please feel free to ask um, in the chat box. Um, we have uh, people who will help to uh, read them to me so that I can answer them as we go along. And I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. And then I'm just going to start adding. And um, the thing that I'm going to add first are the carrots, because like in regular cooking, they take a lot, they take longer to cook than other items. 
And this is a little high, so I'm going to just drop the heat a little bit. Okay. The thing I don't want to do is I don't want to burn it. And again, I'm not going to be drying everything out. I'm going to put in my potato skins and the green of the leaf of the turnip. And I'm just going to saute all of these things. And what I'm trying to do is cover everything with the sesame oil. And then I'm going to add the dill and parsley that I chopped up. Okay. Non-traditional items to go in a furikake, uh, which um, is great. You know, the other thing is we, the Japanese also, um, one of the biggest motai nai users uh, making homemade furikake is when you make dashi, where you're using bonito flakes and kombu, and you have this left over after you've made your dashi stock. And that is very often made into furikake as well and my orange peels, my mikan peels. And all of this is now kind of getting toasted in the pan at a medium low heat. And I would probably do this for about two or three minutes before I would add more seasonings, but we are got a time limit on it today. Um, so I will probably just show you how I add the rate, the others. Um, very classic seasonings for uh, Japanese cuisine are soy sauce and mirin. Mirin is a sweet um, rice wine, a uh, little viscous and often used in cooking. Um, and I'm going to add those today. Um, as you notice, there's is a lot, there's a fair amount of sugar in furikake. Um, and I've avoided using any additional sugar by the use of um, mirin. And so this is mirin, we all, this is a Japanese package, but everybody knows, especially you all in California, um, are able to get a lot of these items and soy sauce. So what I am not gonna do, and what I do when I teach um, in uh, our classes with kids, is that whatever I want to put into the um, dish, I measure outside first, because if you have a mishap by adding too much soy sauce or too much mirin, you've you know got too salty dish or too sweet dish. So I'm gonna measure out here and I'm just using just a little bit, about half a teaspoon, and I'm pouring that on. I wish you could smell this. It smells really, really good, everything put some toasted sesame oil, smells really, really good. And um, then I'm gonna do the same thing with the mirin. I'm gonna just measure it on the side here. And this is a good practice to get into anyway, not measuring over your bowls. And adding things as you go, okay? So as you can see now, Things are beginning to dry up and the seasonings are absorbed in the, um, into the sprinkles, into our little uh, sprinkles here. And we have this just continuing to cook for another couple of minutes. And as I said, because this has oil in it, you can't leave it out of the refrigerator. So if you make enough for three or four tablespoons, which could last a couple of days, you want to store it in the refrigerator. Um, we do not, I not have the ed, you know advantage of um, the scientific you know, breakdown of this or knowing what um, you know, is not gonna cause food to go off or not, but I, so keeping things in the refrigerator is the safest, safest way to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm gonna turn my attention back to the one that I had already made. And well, and I will show you how I season this. Okay. So here, um, I, I will finish this up here. I put it in a little bowl and I would taste it. And I am going to add 
just a little bit of salt. Um, and this is a Japanese table salt. And I will do this over here, in my hand first. Okay, that's gotta be less than a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm just gonna put that in and mix it up. You have furikake. Now that is all ready to use. Um, and this is made with very few items and it is very, very tasty. Um, and I will just show you one other thing regarding fish. Um, many people might know, um, again, they used a, uh, you will very often find uh, you have leftover salmon at home and um, after a dinner, um, not enough to make a meal out of it, you can make salmon flakes, um, which are also, it can be used as something to mix in the rice or as a type of furikake. And so what I did with the salmon that I made, I'd made salmon teriyaki the other night and I had some left over. So I'm starting with cooked salmon, not raw salmon. And then I just pulled it apart with um, two forks like that, made it kind of into shreds. And then I dry, I cooked it in a little bit of oil and a little bit of sesame oil um, in the pan to get it to become dried, okay? And so this are, these are salmon flakes. You can buy them in the Japanese supermarket and they're used um, mixed in with rice uh, or whatever. And I have some sesame seeds here that I will just add to this like that. And salmon, um, I added no extra salt to this because I had already cooked this in a salmon teri in a teriyaki sauce, which also already was uh, salted and from the soy sauce and sweet from the sugar um, of sesame sauce. So these sesame seeds. Um, so there we are, I have two furikake here. And just to close the loop on what we do with it, I have two bowls of rice, uh, two, packages of rice. And um, as a little tip for you, I usually make too much rice or more rice than I can use. And then I put it in the freezer, wrap it up hot, put it in the freezer. And sorry for the multi nai plastic wrap, um, but I will then just put it in the microwave for a minute or two and you will have a delicious hot rice. And um, here I have this. And so if you just want to put it directly on top of the, and did this a little bit earlier, so it's just loosen it up a little bit. I defrost, put it in the microwave. And then you can just take your furikake and put it right on top like that. And you can also, and then just eat it as you would regularly, or you can mix it in. And then as this is um, onigiri action, uh, it's our onigiri action month. I thought I would just quickly make a rice ball for you and take out a piece of nori and show you how we do that. And also, and when we're teaching uh, kids how to make this, and this is sticky rice, we very often use um, wrap to, to do that. Um, I usually do not microwave with the wrap on. I usually take the wrap off and put it in, um, put it on a paper towel on it or um, parchment paper. But in doing this, we're able to actually make onigiri without getting your hands too messy and you're working with children. It's, uh, it's very helpful to just have this to do that. And I will put this here. I made a little bit of cucumber pickles and I used the Mekon skin, the clementine skin to flavor it a little bit. And now I will dip the rice ball into the furikake. Whoops, here we go. And This will be 
part of our onigiri action. Onigiri. Okay, rice ball for today. And you can also, of course, put a band of nori around it um, and eat it. And just a great snack is onigiri, pickles, and a little bowl of soup. So I'd like to ask if anybody has any questions or comments, if anybody's made their own onigiri before, um, and we can try to answer any of them that you have. Any questions from anybody or any comments? There is a one question yes. uh, from Johnny. Uh, instead yes. of sauteing the ingredients, can you air fry them? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I have an air fryer and I love using it as much as I can. And before I give advice, I usually um, I usually try it first. So I don't know the answer to that, but if I was going to try it, um, I would put it on um, parchment paper and I would make sure and maybe mix this all up like that and put just a little sprinkle a little bit of sesame oil on it. And I'd probably um, air fry it in increments of maybe a minute or two minutes. I have no idea whether it's gonna go pop um, out, but it's a really great idea to try it. Um, and um, I, I, I think I will. That's kind of a cool, <laughs> a cool option. Um, very often, this is kind of dry fried in a way. I didn't put too much on it so that you can see that if you're avoiding frying, if that's the question or that's the reason why um, uh, you're trying to avoid frying, you can dry, dry these things or dry, you know, heat them and then they kind of dry naturally, but you have to do it at a very, very slow heat. But anything that you do, I would not heat it for five minutes. I'd heat it for one minute increments. And then if that's not dry enough, I'd go again. Okay, any other questions? Uh, there's comments? another one here. Yeah. Um, how long do the homemade salmon flakes last? And do you store them in the fridge? Yes, I store them in the fridge. Um, and this small amount, I, I probably, again, err on the side of caution. And maybe um, Sensei could give us, um, Morishima-san could give us a more of a scientific answer than that, because those usually last a long time. But just to be on the safe side, you know, maybe, you know, no more than a week or two. Morishima-sensei, what do you think about that? Any, any thoughts on how long you could keep these salmon flakes? はい。えっと、このあの、鮭をこうやってこうあの、触れかけみたいにして、これがどのぐらい冷蔵庫で持つかっていう話なんですが。ああ。鮭を焼いてるんですよね。いや、焼いてるんで、あれば Probably within a week, you should, you know, try to uh, finish eating. Right, right. This is not so much, and it was maybe two inches of of a salmon that I that I used. なんか五センチ、五センチくらい、五センチの四方なんか見た、このぐらい見たいだったんですけど。それでぐらいが混ざってる振りかけだと、やっぱり1週間以内ですかね。はい、あの、完全に乾燥させていない。水分の食品の中にある水分の量で、あの、保存期間が決まるので、えっと、焼いているということであれば、おそらく水分があり
little bits of this and that that you have lying around. It wouldn't, you know, last. I wouldn't take a whole piece of salmon and make this. I just kind of use those leftover. And then the other thing is that you can mix this directly in the rice. So mix it. You don't have to just put it on top of it like furikake. And all furikake um, can be mixed into to rice. And um, the other thing is many of us know that Trader Joe's is now selling um, Japanese rice sprinkles. Um, <laughs> they're not calling them furikake. They're calling Japanese rice sprinkles. And um, it's my thought that um, foods from abroad tend to get disseminated through Trader Joe's. Now everybody loves Korean seaweed um, and it's all kids' favorite snack. And where did we get introduced that to from? Trader Joe's. So, um, and now Furikake is there and, you know, everybody, you know, is loving that too. But I think we also need to know other things that we can use it on, you know, for uh, Western style foods that we eat more frequently. So thank you very much for the opportunity to participate uh, in this. And I love the challenge of coming up with uh, different uh, types of um, foods from things that we would normally throw away. Um, Japan Foundation has uh, had sponsored um, uh, Shoji Nuyori class and um, Matsumoto since I think it was uh, Reverend Matsumoto. Um, he taught us how to use the skins of vegetables in, um, in soups and things. So it was um, an excellent beginning lesson in Motainai. Thank you.